All right, chem students, today we're going to finish talking about our thermochemistry unit with phase changes. Now, we've already kind of talked about phase changes before, but we're going to talk about how they involve exothermic or endothermic processes. Now, you already know that melting is going from a solid to a liquid. And if we're applying heat to something like ice to make it melt, that's endothermic because heat is going in. Now, freezing is the opposite of that. That's when we have a liquid changing to a solid. So, if we're going to remove heat from something to make it colder, that would be exothermic. Now boiling. Boiling is a liquid going to a gas. Okay, and if we're boiling something, we're adding heat to it. Like if we're boiling water, heat is going in, so that would be endothermic. Now condensing is the opposite of boiling. Condensing is when we have a gas going to a liquid. Now gas going to a liquid, we're removing heat again, so that would be exothermic because heat is leaving the system. And the sublimation, you may remember this one from the fall, that's when we skip the liquid phase entirely. We're going to go from a solid to a gas. Now, same scenario, we're adding heat to make this happen, so that would be endothermic. Now, deposition is the opposite of sublimation. That's when we're going to go from a gas to a solid. Now, coming the opposite way, gas to solid, we're removing heat from the system, so that would be exothermic. Okay, so sublimation, to go in more detail, is always going to be from solid to gas phase. No liquid state. So they will go straight from one to the other. Dry ice is a great example. Um, iodine, the same thing. Iodine, as you can see here, goes from a crystal to a gas. And if you go back from a gas to a crystal, that's called deposition. That's when you go from gas, uh, the gas phase to a solid phase. Now, we need to know the difference between vaporization, evaporation, and boiling. Now, vaporization is the process by which a liquid changes to a gas. Evaporation and boiling are two different types of vaporization. Now, evaporation is vaporization that only occurs at the surface of a liquid and it occurs at temperatures below the boiling point. So you don't have to boil water for it to evaporate. Now the temperature will have an effect on how fast it evaporates, but it will evaporate from the surface constantly. Now boiling is vaporization that happens throughout the entire solution. All right, now a use of evaporation in our bodies is perspiration or sweating. How does it help us when we sweat? Basically, heat from your body is being absorbed by the water in your sweat. So some of that perspiration evaporates and that will take the heat with it and cool down your body in the process. Now, how would a fan or a cool breeze help you cool down even more? Basically, the fan will circulate fresh air even more so that the evaporation will be faster. Pressure, during boiling, Vaporization occurs throughout the liquid, like I said a minute ago. Now the bubbles you see are, not, are bubbles of vapor, not just air. The bubbles of vapor forming from the liquid. So the liquid is changing to the gas state and trying to leave. So the pressure inside those bubbles is equal to atmospheric pressure. The vapor then escapes into the atmosphere uh, as it leaves the liquid. Now, the boiling point of a liquid at a pressure of one atmosphere, or sea level, is called its normal boiling point. Now, the one you're used to the most is water, and that is 100 degrees Celsius. Now, the boiling point of a liquid is going to change as external pressure changes. If the external pressure above the water is higher than normal, let's say we're, you know, half a mile underwater, the water will boil at a much higher temperature. So higher pressure means higher temperature needed to boil. If the external pressure is lower than normal, the water will boil at a lower temperature. An example of this is high altitude. If you're boiling water to make coffee on an airplane, you do not have to heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. It will be much lower because the pressure up there is much lower. Now think about it with me saying that about uh, making coffee on an airplane. Why wouldn't foods cook the same at high altitudes. Now at higher altitudes there is less atmospheric pressure, meaning the water is going to boil at a lower temperature. So to compensate for this, you would have to boil your food longer to make sure it's cooked. So there are definite adjustments that have to be made. 
And in theory, if you were high enough, a glass of water would boil at room temperature. Phase changes can be represented on a heating curve, and this is an example of a heating curve. So at the very bottom, this is a solid. Let's use water for example. Water is solid at zero degrees Celsius. And next would be the liquid state. And once we get to the boiling point at 100 degrees, this will convert to a gas. So we have solid as our starting point. When we hit zero degrees, it melts. And as we heat up that liquid to 100 degrees, it will start boiling. So all of these processes, we're adding heat. So those are endothermic processes. So melting and boiling, we're adding heat, and those are positive. Now, if we come down the opposite direction, if we're going from a gas to a liquid, that is condensing. As we become a liquid, we can keep removing heat when we get to zero degrees Celsius, we freeze, and then we become a solid again. So these processes are all exothermic. Heat is leaving. And as the heat leaves, things get colder. So remember, as you go up the graph, endothermic, you're adding heat. As you go down, you are losing heat or releasing, or heat is exiting the system. All right, we have a short little movie to kind of explain some more of that. It's got a cool robotic voice, so let's take a listen. When a solid is heated, the particles gain energy and vibrate faster, and the temperature rises. The more the solid is heated, the more violently the particles vibrate. The temperature continues to rise. At the melting point, the temperature remains the same. This is because the energy being supplied is being used to overcome the forces holding the particles together, freeing them from their solid structure. If you continue to heat the liquid, the particles move around faster and faster and the temperature rises. Some particles gain enough energy to overcome attractive forces and escape from the liquid to become a gas. This is evaporation. When the temperature is higher, more particles have enough energy to escape, so evaporation is faster. When the temperature is high enough, the liquid will boil. The temperature at which a liquid boils is called its boiling point. When the liquid is boiling, the temperature stays the same even though heat energy is still being supplied. The energy is being used to separate the liquid particles from each other. Okay, now phase changes always occur at constant temperature. For example, the freezing and melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius. If the temperature is exactly zero, there will be a mixture of liquid and ice present. Because we have both states of matter present at the freezing melting point, we would say that the solid is in equilibrium with the liquid. So they're both there. Now, if we add heat at this point, you can melt all the ice and then heat the water further if you want. At the same time, if you take away heat, I mean keep cooling it down, you will freeze the rest of the liquid, then you can cool the ice down further. But at that equilibrium, there's no temperature change. Alright, that completes our thermochemistry unit.